Hey, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, today we're going to be making, or at least printing the helmet from Halo Reach, specifically the recon one. The files that I use during this will be leave or left in the description. I will say I did not make this um, particular helmet design. I just downloaded it and ma printed it. It also something that's slightly time consuming if you don't have more than one printer. It can also be time consuming to make this uh, helmet. Uh, if you only have one printer, it can take about a week maybe a week and a half to print it depending on your settings and also depending on your printer you may also uh, need to slice up in multiple parts which is what the second half of this video is going to be so for mine I decided to slice it up in I think six or eight parts uh, I can't exactly remember at the moment because I already did that part um, but in the next section we'll just show you how I did it and how easy it is uh, a program you'll need will be a mix or mesh mixer it's completely free. I believe it's open source as well if you're concerned about licensing. Uh, and now, on to the next part. This is gonna be awful. Anyways. So here within Mesh Mixer, we have the recon helmet as it is. So what we want to do to separate it into multiple parts, uh, we head over to the edit tab over here. We find the plane cut option, which is the fifth one down. The sixth one down, I can't count. And then you'll be presented with a grid. Basically, from the looks of it, this part down here, the lower half of the helmet, is ghosted, which means that when we do the cut, this one will be discarded, and then this part will be kept. So, let's say if we want to just cut it straight in half, you can change the measurement here. And now, what we would, what we can do is change the cut type. If we do slice, this will keep both sides of the helmet. Now, it will still look like this ghostly shape, but it will still stay. And so when we do that, you can actually see there's a blue line there now, which is awesome for what we're trying to do. The only thing that we need to double double up on is to make sure that we use the separate shells command. Basically what this will do is make sure that it's two different parts. So if we open up this object menu and go here, you can actually see that it didn't fill in the gaps here which is actually tedious. So if you don't separate shells, it will have issues with that. Uh, one thing you can do to fix these in post-processing, uh, you can go into the analysis tab, go into the inspector, and then you can just do an auto repair all. Basically, it'll just look at each point, be like, hey, what's the closest point I can do to create a solid finish? So you just hit auto repair all, it will look along the entire edge of this helmet and then it will fill everything in. Now sometimes you'll see little artifacts right here, but in my experience printing this out, I actually um, didn't have any issues with exporting this to my slicer, as in this didn't come up at all during the print. So. As long as you keep those two tools in mind where you can do a plane cut to separate it and then if it doesn't work well after you separate shells you can go into the analysis tab and inspector you should be good there so for settings that I used in this uh, I printed out a layer height of 0.16 uh, that's because I normally I normally print at 0.2 uh, I was convinced of print at 0.16 this time but in case you're not aware, the layer height just kind of makes the resolution of whatever you're printing. Uh, I did a line, a wall count of four. Um, I try to not use as much infill if I have a lot of wall count. And for my info density, I always try to keep it below 10. If I can, I put it around five, or I try to not use it at all, depending on what it is. Uh, I am using Hatchbox filament today. So we will be printing at a temperature of 190 and a bed temp of 70. Now bed temperature is something you can play around with just for adhesion. Uh, I have a glass one, so that's why it's slightly higher. But if you're using the standard tacky material one, you can get by with lower bed temperatures. It just, if you have a correct level, it should be fine. The other thing is that I did is I went from a skirt, which I normally use, and I went to a raft. Typically with, uh, day long prints or day and a half long prints. I like using a raft just because it helps with bed adhesion. I just, I'd rather print, use more filament to make sure I only have to print it once than print something twice just because it came off the print bed. 
which has happened to me when I made the Reaper helmet two years ago. So those are the settings I use for that. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave it down in the description below. Hey guys, uh, I just want to show you that now that we're done, you know, printing the helmet, uh, I got impatient. I, I will say I didn't record any of the, I recorded some of the printing, but it's nothing noteworthy. So if you have a 3d printer, you know how it prints. Um, but what I did do is I got a little, uh, a little excited and I made everything. I put it together. It looks like garbage right now, but it, you can see the shape of it. And obviously there's some parts where it didn't go quite well. Also my camera's blurring the hell out of it. But anyways, but yeah, it, for me, I have a size 23 head. Uh, this print is a size 24, I believe. So there's plenty of space for padding and stuff like that. And I feel comfortable even putting a Raspberry Pi in for uh, electronics and stuff like that. And honestly, it fits relatively well. The only concern I have right now is that when I take it off, my ears rub on this. But that's because I haven't sanded it yet. Once you sand it, get all the stuff on there, it, it'll be easier to take on and off. Also, it's fucking sick, dude. Like, oh my god. I'm so happy I made this. Because this is my favorite helmet from the game. And hopefully I can make the rest of the armor, but my uh, foam smithing skills is not up to the par yet. This is the most I can do at the current moment, so thanks for joining this journey with me. Anyways, also it's held together by duct tape. It's not even glued. But yeah, thank you.